Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Mid Island Motorsports, located in Springdale, Newfoundland. www.edgeproinc.com. By the Sea Inn and Cafe, located in Kings Point. And Outdoor Pros, located in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. This is the Savage Axis, the XP2, I believe chambered in 308 and it's one of those package rifles that you get like from Cabela's or, or or wherever I got this one from Cabela's but it's a very basic rifle you get the basics you get the plastic or synthetic stock you get uh, a big game caliber it comes with the the Bushnell kind of cheapo scope with it and uh, I was so thrilled with it when I got it <laughs> I was so excited it's kind of a funny story but uh, I was just really excited to be able to purchase this big game caliber. I finally had my own big game rifle. And then I got online and started reading the reviews and the comments and everything from the elitists. And I quickly became very unhappy with my rifle. Um, even though the problems I didn't really notice myself at, at the first, um, I became unhappy with them just because every, everyone else was saying that. Now after putting quite a few rounds through it, I can definitely see that there are a few issues. And I just want to make the rifle overall more interesting. It's not a high-end rifle. It'll never be a high-end rifle. But maybe we can get it to shoot a little better, fit us a little better, and just be something we're a little more happy with. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So I'll point out right away that this is going to be a budget build. Partly because I don't want to invest a lot into this sort of lower end rifle. And partly because I don't have a lot of money in my budget to spend on a rifle like this. So we're going to be keeping the price nice and low. I'm going to be showing you how to transform this rifle uh, into something what I believe to be much better for not a lot of money at all. For basically as little as you can do it for. We're going to be addressing an issue with the stock. Now, I could have sunk, say, 400 bucks into a Boyd stock, but I didn't want to do that because that's quite a substantial investment for this caliber of rifle. And if you're going in that kind of money, you may as well just purchase a higher end rifle. What I am going to do is modify this stock to fit me a little better. And what I'm going to do is use a cheek riser. Now, just so you know, the action's clear, there's no mag in there. But when you, when you mount up to your rifle to look down your optic, you should be able to rest your cheekbone right on your rifle. You shouldn't have to prop your head up. You shouldn't have to pick a resting point somewhere along your jaw and hold your face there. You want to be steady and consistent every time you come to your rifle. So you're not, it's not variable. You're not all over. Now, if you sit like that on a rifle, which is where you should be, my eye line is just over the top of the action here. So where that becomes a problem is that the reticle of the scope, or the glass you have on there, is going to be up probably at least three quarters of an inch higher than that, even with the lowest rings you can find. So what people end up doing, and most people probably don't even realize they do it, is they just kind of rest their face up here somewhere where they can get a decent picture. That's not ideal because, like I said, there's always going to be some inconsistency there. Now, this is one eighth inch thick Kydex. Kydex is a uh, is a heat moldable polymer. So you heat it up, you can bend it in whatever shape you want very nicely. Uh, like it really goes almost like a noodle consistency if you really warm it up, and then it cools quickly. And once it cools, it goes right back to this original state, rock hard. So you can mold it to whatever shape you want, i.e our cheek rest here. This is the final template which is the perfect crispy drawing we're going to use just to give you some idea. This is going to go right over our rifle like this and this will be able to slide up and down. Check it out, it is looking fantastic. And we're about to do what is a little bit of the most intimidating part, and that is to heat mold this. This is an inch and a quarter dowel. This is what I've found to be optimal. And this is where those, if you remember those center points I marked in earlier, 
it allows us to mark that up dead center with a dowel so we get a perfect bend. Getting there, we're getting there. Come on. <coughs> okay, I can see that I'm not heated out far enough out here. So it bent lovely right here. You see how it's gone hard just like that? But now, that's, that's fine. It's nice and straight. So now I'll warm up a little, down a little further. And we'll uh, I'll just work, kind of work it down around. Now we got out the D-Walt here. Quarter inch bit. I got a couple starting holes. So of course we have our cheek piece here now, which looks real great in my opinion. We have our new carriage bolts that are going to be really slick with that rounded head. What we need are some adjustment knobs. We don't want to put just ugly old nuts on the end of there and a washer that you have to use a wrench or something to tighten down. So what I have are two custom knobs. You ready to look at these? Look at those. <laughs> Custom machined by Mr. J.S. Saunders. I'm sure you'll see him comment below this video. He's a machinist by trade. That's what he does and he is a master at it. And look at these two knobs. Stainless steel. I mean, I picked him up yesterday and I was just blown away. Just so so beautiful look at those now to see how she looks let's get those quarter inch carriage bolts through there Ooh, those slides are nice now this is exciting <laughs> look at how good that looks now let's not leave it down flat let's make it do what it was meant to do it was meant to come up here somewhere like this wherever we want it. of course we'll refine it later these can crank down nice and tight and there we have <laughs> that is so so nice these aren't really cranked down yet so there are a couple critiques about the Savage Trigger one is that it has this side to side play. I'm not sure if you can see that but I'm just pushing this trigger from side to side there. It's not a very refined trigger. Uh, the second thing is that it is a really heavy trigger pull so of course the action is clear. This is a Wheeler trigger, trigger, uh, trigger pull scale and let's just go from the lull of the trigger here So on our first pull, we pulled five and a half pounds. The last thing, uh, the last real critique with this trigger is it's a very spongy trigger. So after your sear releases, or you pull the trigger and after the gun fires, you still have all the sponginess back here that you don't want. The, the trigger doesn't really stop at any point. You just stop being able to pull it any further because of the spring weight. So it's really spongy. Now you could go and invest a couple hundred bucks in a Timney trigger, okay, but that wouldn't be much of a budget build in comparison to the value of this rifle and what we're doing here. What I have got is the M Carbo Pro Trigger Spring Kit. Just two simple screws and then the stock just pulls right away. Of course your trigger, uh, your trigger, trigger guard assembly here is a separate piece. So all of that side to side play is because we don't have a very tight fit. Notice how much I can play this trigger side to side here. This kit comes with two little shims, we'll see there in a moment, to fit in there to remove that play. It also comes with some nice gel as well, some nice grease there. Now this spring back here is a very, very thick spring, so we're going to replace that with uh, a lighter gauge spring. We have an over travel screw right here that we're also going to replace with one that's in that little kit. First things first, remove this little retainer clip. 
be careful you don't lose it while taking it off. Success. Now we can gently remove the pin here. Keeps our trigger in place. Pull that out. And here we have it. This new over travel screw will go into or thread into the one that the spring was in. And our M Carbo spring will just sit right over there like that. So we'll have a light compression and then it'll stop as soon as it hits that over travel spring. Isn't that nice? Here are two little shims to go on either side of the trigger to give that a perfect fit. Come on, we almost got you. Ah, there we go. So that's it, our clip is on, we have our assembled trigger. Notice we have zero side to side play. Of course we added in, it's amazing that these are milled with that much space to fit a washer, a thin washer or a shim on both sides of the trigger. That's amazing that there's that much gap in there. So let's just, let's see what that feels like. Let's cock that bolt. <laughs> what a difference. Let's get that trigger scale in here. I haven't tested this, haven't tested it off camera. Let's see what it looks like here. We have two and a half pounds there. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Paul'sFinest.com. Nobles Timber Mart with locations in Springdale and Bayvert. WildMedkits.ca. Robinson's General Store, located in Middle Arm. And ABS Bussing, also located in Middle Arm, Newfoundland. We're going to paint this rifle using rattle can spray. Now I've looked at quite a few different methods of painting rifles just looking for ideas on YouTube and whatnot and I'm going to follow the idea of one in particular that I really liked of all, of all the rest. The first thing we have to do here is to degrease that stock and I'm going to use some Varisol to do that. So I'm just going to wipe everything down with Varisol. That's our first step. Now again all personal preference but here's what I have. I have all matte finish of course nothing gloss or reflective we have like a khaki or tan we have a green what is the name of this olive olive green and this is a brown what is the name well, it's just called dark brown uh, these two are made by beauty tone camel coat and this is a rustoleum camouflage so all matte all going on over that black finish and then we have a matte clear coat this is by Krylon here <coughs> that will seal it all in with after so that these stay on. It's a little more durable. Here we go. The guy on the video says always start with your lightest color. So that's what we're going to do. And how we're going to paint is not actually to paint onto the gun with the can but to use some rough broken up sponges like this and he just kind of dips some paint, sprays some paint out in a nice thin layer on some paper and then he just kind of sponges it all over his stock. Um, your first coat of course you really space out then the next color you start to fill in the gaps and then the next color the same thing. So we're all degreased, everything's dry. Let's get on some gloves. Tell you one of the best things I ever did in terms of shop work was to start investing buying boxes of gloves like this. It's just so nice to be able to snatch a pair whenever you want. Keep nice and clean, dry, keep your projects clean like here and now. Don't have to worry about touching the stock and getting oils and stuff on them. It's just uh, it's a good way to do it. Let's give her a good shake here. Now we're just gonna load up some paint here. Oh boy, which sponge are we gonna pick first? Let's take this. Let's take this one here. Let's 
Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Just experimenting here. We don't have it all figured out. Okay. I thought that was a little bit light. I guess I didn't... Uh, Spray out enough at first. That it's much better. Yeah. Here we go. So we're just kind of remember keeping lots of room. So here's what we have so far on our stock. Maybe you like it, maybe you hate it, doesn't matter to me. It's going good. We've got our mag. Now it's time for the next color. And I'm gonna pick that beauty tone olive green. We got that spread out clear this time. So now we just start coming in between here. Get a quick shot here of what the tan and the green look like together. Need a bit more tan on this side. We'll have to darken it up a little bit. That's how she's looking so far. Now on to that chocolate brown. Or the dark brown, whatever it's called there. Eh? Ooh, you can see that brown more than I was thinking. Excellent. I didn't think it was going to show up much on that uh, on that black stock, but that's lovely. Well, our clear coat is just dry, and here's what we have. Love it or hate it, it's done now. That's for your guys' case. I love it. I really like it. I think it looks great. another step in this project I honestly could not be happier with how that finish turned out I hope you guys like it I am ecstatic with it uh, we stripped it down we did a whole paint job on this thing we built a rear cheek riser we had some custom milled knobs back here by my good friend and machinist Mr. Saunders uh, we have an M Carbo Pro Trigger kit put in there and now we're about to put on some top hardware or some glass here this is very exciting because then you get to see really what your rifle looks like. Let me show you what scope I chose. So first off here we're doing a weaver one piece rail that's going right on the top of that action. We're sitting it on some hawk rings here. Those are triple screw rings and there are even uh, two top mounts there with some Picatinny rail if you wanted to put something on top of there. For the scope, check it out, we're going with a Nikon P tactical. Isn't that a good looking scope? So first off all the badging is blacked out so where the Nikon here would be normally in white or silver it's completely blacked out so that is just a little bit of a tactical. We have the P tactical badge up here. These target turrets are something that I was really really wanting in a scope and I got them with this system. So notice here there aren't any normal screw on caps for these turrets. These are always exposed like this. You have a beautiful numbering system and one thing I love is that you have these are quick adjust turrets. So you can pick it up like that and reset to zero. So once you zero your rifle there's no unscrewing a little allen key or anything like that. You can just pick it up, dial it back to zero and drop it and it snaps back in place. The same thing here goes for the uh, for the windage adjustment. Quarter MOA, this is a 3 by 9 powered scope with a 40 mil objective so nothing outrageous there just a beautiful little scope to go on top of this rifle. So we lay that rail on there now we'll just put a little tiny touch of Loctite. It's the blue 242 Loctite. I just love the look of a single piece rail like that. It looks so good.
<laughs> now after just a little bit of playing around I discovered that the scope can be way on back here to be right where I'm like 100% comfortable I'm not I'm not reaching forward okay so we're about to put on those top mounts now and what we need is this rifle to be level in this axis. It's not as important in this axis front to rear but left and right it needs to be level because the, if the rifle's level then after we put the scope on it we can level the scope so everything is perfect get this thing as accurate as possible. Notice that in the Y axis that is this bubble here from left to right we are exactly zero degrees so we are good now to get our scope in there and then level our scope in the same way. So now I've put these top mounts on just tight enough so if I give a little weight on the scope I can still manage to turn it. Now what we're going to do is get that bubble level on top of the scope and level up that scope. So we have to turn over quite a bit. Right there is where that scope is dead level. So now what we want to do, this one has a three, so we want to just tighten evenly on each side. If you just go ahead now and crank down one side, there's a chance it could pull your scope over even just a tenth or two of a degree. she is and I am super proud of this rifle here now. If you started out with just the basic Savage Axis like I did at the start of this video and you're happy with it, keep it like it. I'm sure you're doing just fine like it is. I just wanted to show you what was possible for a very small amount of money. Um, a, a true budget build in my opinion. I've seen some guys on their on uh, on YouTube do budget builds with the Savage Axis and they're putting seven and eight hundred dollar scopes on there so what's even the point once you get to that level is it really a budget build I guess compared to the guy that puts a three thousand dollar optic on his rifle but to us common folk that's not considered a budget build if you're slapping two and three hundred dollar too many triggers in there putting on a seven hundred dollar scope and flute in the barrel and flute in the bolt and things like that Boyd stock I mean you're, you're talking a couple grand and you could do all that but it's not needed in my opinion. I am so proud of this rifle. I absolutely love it. The optic looks fantastic. Um, it feels so good to finally have a rifle that fits me effortless, effortlessly and that's the key is that when you just you just fall down on the rifle you, you are it's like sitting on the, the perfect sofa you just you fall in there and you have the perfect line of sight down your optic is beautiful. So I've been putting some rounds down range with this rifle now and I just gotta say I absolutely love it. The rifle has completely transformed into something that was just doing the job to something that's truly a joy to use. Now I have the rifle zeroed at 100 yards uh, that's just how I do it but I have a target down here an 8 inch plate at 200 yards we're gonna see what we can do with it today here on the bipod. Now I've measured off that 200 yards with the rangefinder, which means I can accurately calculate my scope. Now 308 round like I have here, you can just look on the box for the, for the trajectory of it. But with zeroed at 100 yards, at 200 yards, I'm going to be dropping almost 4 inches, with 3.5, 4 inches. So what you can do here now is at 200 yards, every click is a half inch adjustment. So to make up 3.5, 4 inches of adjustment, I have to go up... One, that's so we're up half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half inches. There. Yay! Dead center. Dead center. Oh yeah. 
So that is it. Our project is done. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know, shooting is such a rewarding hobby. Long range shooting like this is my forte. I like, get out of here. I like the, the sport and the science, the physics of it. It's just really a lot of fun dialing those shots in. But just shooting in general, it can be done in such a safe and responsible way and it can really be a great, fun sport, even for the family. So, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Thank you to the sponsors. If you can support them, please go ahead and do that. As always, make sure you tune in next week. Get, Get lousy hornets. As always, guys, make sure you tune in next week to Newfoundland Hobbyists.